On today's show, I will be reacting to your Dallas Stars hot takes. We'll talk about Tyler Sagan and the numbers he might put up this season, talk about a potential top prospect cracking the NHL roster, and talk about Thomas Harley and the improvement he could potentially make this season on a loaded Friday episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credential member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Friday, July 29th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, thank you for stopping by today's episode and for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube as well as on your favorite podcast platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you listen. You can also find and follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis, as well as our show at Locked on Stars, where you can always participate in our Friday mailbag discussions. And today's topic was your Dallas Stars hot takes. And there were plenty to choose from, plenty to dissect. Uh, Thank you guys for responding and for making this such an engaging uh, show to, to do research for and prepare. But without any further hesitation or teasing, let's jump right into the hot takes. And the first one, there were several people that said something of this iteration, not all of them quite the same, but there were quite a few takes saying that Tyler Sagan would have basically a huge bounce back season uh, and get back to being a somewhat you know close resemblance of his former self, quote unquote, a guy that could come back and be an elite scorer for this Dallas Stars team and be one of the more revered players in the NHL and you know to bring up Pete DeBoer yet again uh, you know there certainly is that possibility that Tyler Sagan can really take his game to the next level from where we saw him in the previous season where his numbers were down especially in the front half of the campaign really after kind of that Christmas COVID break in the second half of the season that's where we really start We started to see Tyler kind of go back into being his former self, of course, coming off surgery and injuries. I mean, it's not a very easy transition for a guy like that, especially a guy that's been around as long as he has to just jump right back in and go back to scoring a ton of goals night in and night out. But I think by the end of the season, we started to see Tyler look a little bit more like himself. And I think with the emergence of Pete DeBoer as the head coach, we have hope Uh, and a reason to believe that we can see Tyler kind of take that turn at this point in his career where he's kind of at the middle of his career right now in the middle of this massive contract uh, with the Stars. And, you know, we look back at some previous teams that were coached by Pete DeBoer, especially in their first season under his leadership. Going all the way back to 2011-2012, we saw two NHL veterans have big bounce-back seasons under DeBoer's coaching when he came to New Jersey. Ilya Kovalchuk, and Patrick Elias both took massive jumps in that debut season. In 2010-2011, Elias led the team, the Devils, in points at 62, and Kovalchuk was second with 60, and the New Jersey Devils missed the postseason. But then enter Pete DeBoer. In 2011-2012, Kovalchuk led the team with 83 points, 37 goals, nearly a 40-goal score, and Elias was second on the team with 78 points and to top it all off they made the Stanley Cup finals but it continues on to the next team that he would coach in 2014-2015 the San Jose Sharks were led by Joe Pavelski with 70 points Joe Thornton was 65 Brent Burns had 60 a young Tomas Hurdle had 31 and the San Jose Sharks missed the 2015 playoffs but in 2015-2016 Pete DeBoer's first season in the Bay Pavelski had 78 points Thornton Thornton, excuse me, 82, Burns, 75, and Hurdle, 46. And 
yet again, they made the Stanley Cup Finals. And then even in Vegas, not as many names to throw out, but still there were some improvements for some guys on those Golden Knights teams that DeBoer was leading in 2018-19 before DeBoer got there. Max Pacioretty had 40 points and Shea Theodore had 37. And they, of course, did lose in round one to Pete DeBoer's San Jose Sharks. But then in 2019-2020, Pacioretty has 66 points. Theodore has 46 points. And I know DeBoer kind of comes in a weird situation with that team, but still, they were under his leadership for the latter half of that season and the playoff run where they did eventually make the Western Conference Finals. So I bring all of this up to say that several players, especially veteran players that are either at the end or middle of their NHL careers, have seen significant jumps in points or goals when Pete DeBoer comes in to coach. And I certainly think that this could be the case with Tyler Sagan, but then you can even throw in guys like Jamie Benn. Denis Gurionov could be in that Tomas Hurdle scenario where he's a younger guy on the team, but that still hasn't put up the best numbers. But then with this emergence of this new coach that runs a different system than the previous coach, you have the opportunity for growth and development. And I know even one of the, the takes that I threw up on the screen earlier from my friends at Starcastic Remarks saying that the Stars would be top 10 in scoring, due in large part to guys like Sagan, Gurionov, Ben, and even a guy like Mason Marchman. We know the top line is going to get their points. We know what they are capable of, regardless of who is coaching them, it seems. But really, what's going to make or break this Stars team is whether or not they can get that consistent secondary scoring. And while many of the guys I mentioned for the Devils, Sharks, and Golden Knights were some of the primary guys, I think it's definitely still worth noting that before DeBoer came, their stats were lower. And then as soon as DeBoer comes in that first season, their numbers take a jump and the team as a whole improves and reaches incredibly, incredibly high heights, making the Stanley Cup Finals and or the Western Conference Finals, losing to you know a pretty good Dallas Stars team in the bubble the Vegas Golden Knights did. But there's tons of reasons to get excited for Pete DeBoer. I know people, many people, including myself, were maybe a little bit negative or maybe a little too quick to point out the flaws with DeBoer. But the more I think about it and the more I dig into his past with these previous teams, the more I get excited for the idea of seeing the reemergence of some of these veterans like Sagan and Ben to be maybe not quite the elite scores that they once were, but they're at least contributing more in making their contracts make a little bit more sense and make us feel a little less dread when we look at the cap situation for the Stars going into this season. So don't be surprised if we see some uptick in numbers for some of the Dallas star veteran offensive players and maybe even some defensemen as well because Pete DeBoer has had that effect wherever he's gone. Well, coming up next, we will talk about another hot take revolving around one of the top prospects in the Dallas Stars organization. We'll talk about Wyatt Johnston after a quick break. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is a new flavor, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it yet again. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's good for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar and grab yourself a Built Bar. You can grab one today by going to their website, Built.com, and use our promo code LOCKED15 and you can get 15% off your order. Again, use our promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order at Built.com. All right, we're moving on on this Friday mailbag episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, continuing on with your hot takes concerning the Dallas Stars. And again, saw a few people mention this one to me. There are a handful of people, and rightfully so because of the season he just had, that believe that Wyatt Johnston will crack the NHL roster for the Stars this season and be a member of this team throughout the duration 
of the year and maybe potentially make a pretty deep impact on the roster. And again, this is no surprise. Johnston just had an outstanding season with the Windsor Spitfires. He is considered by many to be the best prospect within the Dallas Stars prospect system, with all due respect to Logan Stankoven and Maverick Bork, who could also very well be in that conversation, maybe even be in this conversation as well to crack the NHL roster and make their NHL debut. But talking about Johnston specifically, because at least at the time of recording this, those are the that's the only prediction around a prospect that has been sent to me. I would absolutely love to see this happen for several reasons. I would love him to, you know, one, just the storyline of seeing this guy who had an incredible OHL season then make that jump to the NHL at a very young age. At the time of recording this before the season, he's only 19 years old, but still looks like he has one of the brightest futures amongst the 2021 NHL draft class, especially from that first round where there was still a plethora of talent, yet the Stars getting Johnston 18 felt somewhat like a steal, and it looks like a better pick by the day. And of course, there's always the possibility that he does make that immediate impact and become a really talented playmaker and score in the NHL early on in his career. Of course, that's very easy to say. The game between the OHL and the NHL, there is a huge gap of difference there. Two very different leagues. The level of competition is drastically different and drastically more intense at the NHL level. So don't expect Johnston, if he does crack the roster, to just absolutely go on a tear. But don't expect him to just kind of be this bystander kind of player. Expect him to at least, you know, make an effort to be an effective playmaker passing wise, playmaking wise, and even shooting the puck wise, because he is a kid that can absolutely just about do it all on the ice offensively. And of course, there's going to be plenty of spotlight on the veterans on this team, like we just addressed in the last segment, talking about Sagan, Ben, even a guy like Marchment coming in, but it would be great for a young guy and by young guy I mean a guy who is literally still a teenager to come in and maybe take some of the load off the shoulder of those veterans as much as we want to see the vets you know deliver on their contracts and be great contributors to the squad if you can have a young guy come in and also be a contributor it takes some of the spotlight and attention off of them if they are lacking in numbers and put some of it on this young guy that's able to come in and do some things that maybe the the aged veterans can't do as well I mean we saw what Marit Sider did for the Red Wings. Of course, the Wings were not a playoff team in what was an incredibly competitive Atlantic division, but they still had a better season than they've had in previous outings. Uh, and, and Cider was a really nice addition to that veteran core that they built in Detroit. But even if you want to talk about a Dallas Stars example from the season, we saw what Jacob Peterson, a fifth round pick, could do. You know, I wouldn't say that he took the spotlight or took the scoring load off anyone's shoulder and put it on himself, but there were still moments where he was, you know, garnering the attention of the Stars media and the NHL world. And that was just a small sample size. But imagine what a guy like Johnston could do, a guy that is very much capable and able to maybe double his output from this past season. Who knows? The, the, Sky is the limit with this Wyatt Johnson kid. I mean, he is truly a spectacle to watch, even at the OHL level. And again, the game might not translate for him immediately. He's a guy that if he does crack the NHL roster, that we might have to be a little bit patient for, but especially if he does play for the majority of the season, if he gets a lot of ice time, that is what I mean by that. I think that we could potentially see him really come along and grow quite nicely, maybe even especially after the All-Star break once he really has his feet wet. I think that there's a potential for him to maybe not be a Calder candidate, but a guy that's considered one of the better rookies in the NHL. And, you know, it's just an exciting thing to think about a guy that was drafted, you know, only a year ago that you think, okay, maybe we're not going to see this guy at the NHL level for two, maybe three seasons. But the idea that he could, you know, only be on the team after one season back in the OHL with his junior club is a pretty intriguing idea. Really the only problem or glaring quote unquote issue I see with this is Johnston is considered a center centerman uh, just about anywhere I could find him NHL.com elite prospects and the stars seem to be pretty well rounded with four good NHL centermen with Rope, Sagan, Foxa, and Glenn Denning. Rope and Sagan a little bit more on the scoring side. Fox, Glenn Denning, 
uh, really good in the faceoff circle, really good, you know, checking wise. Uh, not to say that Johnston couldn't come in. I mean, he could certainly still come in and play a wing position. He's a very versatile player, uh, and I think a lot of the good parts of his game could still translate, even if he was having to play somewhere on the wings, or maybe you move one of the other guys to the wings every now and then. I'm not logistically sure how it might work if he does crack the NHL roster, but I don't think, with again, with his talents, that it would be too difficult for the coaching staff to find a place to put him. Uh, and even if he does have to adjust, that's what training camp is for. That is what the preseason is for, is getting guys acclimated to potentially playing spots that are outside of their original position or even outside of their comfort zone. So even though that might be not even really a concern, just an observation that the Stars, their, their strength in the forward position might be the center position, that's just something to consider with Johnson, but also something to get excited about as we might be moving on from Luke Glendinning or Roddick Foxa here in the next few seasons, and then there could be a permanent spot on the roster for a guy like Johnston. But he will also be competing against several other young hungry players in training camp for a roster spot, including guys that made their debuts last season, guys like Riley Tufty, Riley Damiani, Marion Studenich, uh, Carl Strum. I mean, the list could go on and on. Ty Delandry. I mean, there's going to be a plethora of guys. We've hammered on it plenty this offseason, and it's something worth getting excited about. It's a good problem to have that we have all of these young, intriguing, hungry prospects, some of them that have already seen NHL minutes, but guys that aren't proven NHLers yet that are going to consistently be on the roster. We're going to have a good handful of those guys competing at training camp in September for a roster spot, and I think that's going to bring out the best in each guy, and we will eventually get the best guys that are fit for the NHL roster on opening night. Whether or not that's why Johnston is yet to be determined, I'm really excited to see how he and some of the other guys like Stan Coven and Bork perform at training camp, and even if they don't make the NHL roster this coming season, they're still worth getting excited about, and maybe that extra year and juniors really does you know, take their game to another new height another new level which seems impossible given the numbers all three of those guys have put up this past year but it certainly is something to be on the lookout for coming up next to close out the show we will talk about another young player but a guy that is likely to be on the nhl roster on opening night we'll talk about some expectations for thomas harley after another quick break All right, we're closing out this Friday mailbag episode of Locked on Stars with a very spicy take. A guy on Twitter said that Thomas Harley would be a 30-plus point scorer. Absolutely love this take. Probably the hottest take I saw of them all. The other one, still great takes, really, really good discussion, talking points. But this one, I mean, kind of coming out of nowhere. But again, I absolutely love this take and would be ecstatic if this one did come true. Because Thomas Harley, while he did get a decent amount of ice time, decent amount of games played last season, he was nothing spectacular stats-wise with one goal, three assists, four points in total in 34 games played. But he is only 20 years old. He will turn 21 on August 19th. So this is, again, another young guy within the organization who really is kind of being forced into this NHL situation just due to a lack of depth, especially now that it seems like John Klingberg will be playing with a new team. Uh, it seems all but inevitable that Thomas Harley will probably get a roster spot in the six-man defensive core for opening night and probably even beyond that uh, just because there will be a need for NHL experienced defensemen and even though he doesn't have that many games under his belt he does fit that category he does fit that criteria of having some NHL experience in the regular season and of course we know he made that one appearance late in the bubble run with the Dallas Stars when he was literally just a, a baby as far as NHL standards go so this guy's already been through a lot even though he's only 20 years old not even 21 yet but will be uh, in a little less than a month but you know we've already discussed the impact that Pete DeBoer can have on rosters and individual players when he arrives to a new city but you know even looking at other great defensemen in NHL history we can see that it's very much possible for Harley to take this next big jump and these guys I'm about to mention I'm not saying that Harley is going to be the next whatever these players are or live up to their potential or get to the pedigree that they have but it's just you know the some of these guys that I'm about to talk about will likely be Hall of Famers, guys that are considered some of the best defensemen of their generation in recent NHL history, uh, and that they didn't have the best numbers in their first go-around as 
NHLers maybe in their first full season, but then they went on to have pretty nice sophomore campaigns or even third season. Guys like Chris Letang, who ironically enough has a pretty similar build to Thomas Harley. Letang is six foot two hundred and one pounds, and Harley is six foot three two hundred five. Both of those, according to NHL.com, Harley a little bit bigger, but still not too much far off from a guy like Chris Letang. Uh, who played his first full season with the Penguins in 2007-2008, where he scored only 17 points in 63 games. But, you know, he went on in the next season to really explode onto the scene and really start to establish that kind of core, uh, you know, Latang, Malkin, Crosby there in Pittsburgh, and how has gone on to be one of the, again, better defensemen of his generation before he eventually re-signed with the Pens. He was one of the highly sought-after defenseman prospects in this free agency class, and that is for good reason, because he built on that freshman season and went on to have a very solid career, still having a solid career. But even a guy like Shea Weber, who played 28 games with the Predators when he he debuted in the NHL in 05-06, only had 10 points that season in 28 games. But then in his next season, the 06-07 season, he played 79 games and scored 40 points. So he took a massive jump there and, you know, times four his points. Uh, that's probably terrible math or a terrible way to put that, but that's basically what happened. He went from 10 to 40, and he also saw that uptick in games, which of course, that's really what it boils down to is getting that experience. The more games you play, the more comfortable you're going to get in the NHL and the more likely you are to finally kind of find a groove and you're able to go with the ebbs and flow of the defensive core and the ebbs and flows of the team as a whole. But even a guy like Ryan McDonough, who played 40 games in his first NHL season with the New York Rangers, only scored nine points in 2010-2011, but then in 2011-2012, he played all 82 games with the Rangers and scored 32 points. Again, none of these numbers monumental or huge, but certainly improvements. And again, all three of these guys considered some of the better defensemen of the 2010s or maybe late 2000s as well, and guys that have gone on to have illustrious careers. I mean, all of these guys, very, very talented and very impactful for the teams they played for in their own right. Uh, and will Thomas ever reach the level of these three? Maybe, maybe not. Again, only time will tell. He's only 20 years old. The best days of his career are still ahead of him. But I bring all of that up to say that, you know, we've seen these guys make these jumps before. These guys that are now some of the best in the game uh, go on, you know, build off mediocre to bad first outings or not very productive first outings and then go on to have really nice second and third seasons and overall have good careers and I think we should be optimistic about Thomas Harley this season because he was a first round pick just a handful of years ago for the Dallas Stars and the Stars have done very well in their first rounds over the past few seasons uh, and even into the later rounds as well the Stars in recent memory have been on a pretty good tear as far as drafts go even dating all the way back to when they got Rope Hints but the 2017 draft the 2021 draft looks like it's going to be very solid 2022 seems to be filled with some gems as well. And so there's no reason that Thomas Harley can't fit that criteria of really good Dallas Stars draft pick selections, and they desperately need it given the lack of depth at the defenseman position now with Ryan Suter kind of being a little bit older, Essa Lindell getting up there in age. Miro Haskin and very talented, very good, but he cannot shoulder the load on his own. So it would be fantastic to see Thomas Harley take that jump and be a 30 plus point score. And again, could be a great storyline for this team to help shoulder some of the load from the veterans on the team like Suter, Lindell, and Haskinen. But let me know what you guys think about all of these hot takes down in the comments below. And let me know if you have any other ones as well. And maybe they'll get highlighted if we do another hot takes mailbag episode. But that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you again to all of you that submitted questions and hot takes. Not all of them get featured on every show, but I do read all of them and try to like them or acknowledge them in some way. So thank you guys for contributing in that manner. Thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube as well as on your favorite podcast platform. Remember, we are free and available no matter where or how you listen. Uh, you can also find and follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis and our show as well at Locked on Stars. But guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe, stay cool, and we will see you back here on Monday.